What makes us think, feel, and move? Let's start with a question. Have you ever wondered how your brain works? Picture your brain as a city. Each part of the city has its own job. Together, they make the whole city run smoothly. First, let's talk about the brainstem, which is like the city's basic services. It controls things you don't even think about, like breathing and your heart beating. Brainstem includes the medulla, which regulates vital functions like heart rate, breathing, and blood pressure. The pons, which relays messages between the cerebellum and the cerebral cortex, and is involved in sleep and arousal. And the midbrain, which controls eye movement and processes auditory and visual information. Next, we have the cerebellum, which helps with coordination and balance. Imagine it as the city's traffic control center, making sure everything moves smoothly without crashes. The cerebellum also plays a role in motor learning and timing of movements. Think of it like a dance instructor, teaching and perfecting your movements. Moving on, the reticular activating system, RAS, and the brain's reward center handle voluntary movement, eye movement, learning, thinking, and emotions. The RAS, which includes the midbrain, pons, and medulla, acts like the city's alarm system, waking you up and keeping you alert. The brain's reward center, primarily involving the ventral tegmental area, VTA, nucleus accumbens, and prefrontal cortex, is like the city's entertainment district, ensuring you feel pleasure and motivation when you achieve something. The VTA releases dopamine, a feel-good chemical. The nucleus accumbens processes rewards, as well as love and addiction, and the prefrontal cortex plans and makes decisions based on these rewards. It's like getting a reward for good grades, which keeps you motivated to study. Then there's the cerebral cortex. It's like the city's government, divided into two halves, each handling different tasks. The occipital lobes are the city's visual processors, located at the back, handling everything you see. They contain the primary visual cortex, which processes basic visual information like light, shape, and movement, and the visual association areas, which integrate this information to form complete images and recognize objects. For example, when you look at a tree, your occipital lobes help you identify its shape and color. The temporal lobes on the sides deal with sound and understanding language, including recognizing faces and processing music. They contain the primary auditory cortex, which processes basic sounds, the auditory association areas, which interpret these sounds, including speech and music, and the fusiform face area, which recognizes faces. Imagine you're at a concert, and your temporal lobes help you enjoy the music and recognize the faces of the band members. The parietal lobes near the top back are the city's information organizers. They help you make sense of touch and where your body is in space. The somatosensory cortex, part of the parietal lobes, processes touch sensitivity and spatial awareness, helping you understand where your body parts are without looking. The parietal lobes also handle the integration of sensory information and help with spatial navigation through the primary somatosensory cortex and the posterior parietal cortex. For example, when you're playing a sport, your parietal lobes help you judge where the ball is and coordinate your movements to catch it. The frontal lobes, just behind your forehead, are the city's decision makers. They help you think, plan, and control your movements. Prefrontal cortex is involved in higher order thinking, impulse control, and social behavior, while the motor cortex controls precise voluntary movements, like writing or playing an instrument. Frontal lobes also include the primary motor cortex, which directly controls voluntary movements, and the premotor cortex, plans and coordinates movements. Additionally, Broca's area, involved in speech production, is located in the left frontal lobe. Imagine you're giving a speech. Your frontal lobes help you organize your thoughts and control your speech and gestures. There's a special part called the limbic system within the cerebral cortex, which includes parts like the thalamus, hypothalamus, pituitary gland, hippocampus, and amygdala. This system is like the city's emotional and memory centers. The thalamus acts like the city's switchboard, directing sensory information to the right areas. The hypothalamus regulates basic needs like hunger, thirst, and body temperature, acting like the city's thermostat. The pituitary gland is the city's hormone factory, controlling growth and metabolism. The hippocampus is the city's memory archive, storing and retrieving memories. The amygdala handles emotional responses, especially fear and pleasure, like the city's emotional response team or psychologists. It also helps form emotional memories. For instance, when you remember a happy event from your past, your hippocampus and amygdala work together to recall the details and emotions. The corpus callosum is the bridge connecting the two halves of the brain, allowing them to communicate. This communication is crucial for integrating functions like language and spatial reasoning. Imagine it as a busy bridge in the city that connects two major districts, enabling smooth traffic flow. Some parts of the brain, like Broca's area and Wernicke's area, are in charge of speaking and understanding speech. Damage to these areas can make speaking or understanding difficult, known as aphasia. 
Broca's area, located in the frontal lobe, helps produce speech, while Wernicke's area, in the temporal lobe, helps understand it. Split brain research shows us that the two halves of our brain can specialize in different tasks. This was discovered by studying patients whose corpus callosum was cut to treat severe epilepsy. Researchers tested these patients by showing information to one visual field at a time. For example, if an image was shown to the left visual field, the patient could not name it. It is the right hemisphere, which saw the image, could not communicate with the left hemisphere, which controls language. The most amazing part? The brain's plasticity. One part is damaged, another part can often take over its job. For example, if the area responsible for movement is damaged, a nearby area might adapt to help with movement. It's like a city rebuilding and reassigning roles after a disaster. Young brains are especially good at this, but even adult brains have some plasticity. That means if you injure a part of your brain, other parts can learn to take over its functions over time. Scientists study the brain using tools like EEG, electroencephalogram, and fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging scans, case studies, and surgical procedures such as lesioning. EEG measures electrical activity in the brain, while fMRI tracks blood flow to show brain activity. Case studies like that of Phineas Gage, who survived a severe head injury, showed how damage to the frontal lobes can affect personality and behavior. Another example is the study of Henry Molaison, H.M., who had his hippocampus removed to treat epilepsy, resulting in severe memory loss. Lesioning involves damaging specific brain areas in animals to see how behavior changes, helping scientists understand what those areas do. For example, lesioning the amygdala in animals can reduce fear responses, demonstrating its role in processing fear. So the next time you think, move, or feel something, remember your brain city at work. Each part plays a vital role in making you who you are. Isn't it fascinating how much our brains can do?